Oscar Willis has balls like a Bengali tiger. Fucking big juicy balls as Oscar Willis at a Mac Life got. And he's fighting Ben Davis for a fucking play to Ben. He's outsourced. And Oscar, he's in home territory. So he's up against it. But Oscar's coming for the goal, baby. Let's go, Oscar Willis at a Mac Life. All right, so Conor McGregor was having the time of his life this past weekend at the BKFC's event in Marbella, Spain. And the first clip that I want to talk about here is his interview that he did on Misfits Boxing Channel. First off, McGregor hyping up Oscar Willis from the Mac Life fighting Ben Davis from Misfits by saying that Willis has big juicy balls like a Bengali tiger is insane. The way that he holds up his hands in the air as he says it makes me laugh every single time I've watched this clip. But lo and behold, Mystic Mac strikes again because his boy Oscar absolutely demolished Ben Davis when they actually got in the ring together. Then he had this to say about wanting to box KSI of all people, which Jesus Christ. Let's go. Any messages for KSI? I'll, I'll fight him for that bullshit song he released alone. I'll fight him for that fucking song alone. Day four, here we go, I'm back, baby. The richest motherfucking photographer in the game, baby. Hey, that man, yeah, get that man more magic. I mean, hey, I don't disagree that KSI's new song is terrible, but the day that McGregor stoops so low in his career to start taking up influencer boxing fights against KSI or Logan Paul, for example, then that'll be a very sad one. Also, it's pretty clear to me that he is pretty high on the devil's dandruff throughout this interview, and just know that this sets the precedent for the rest of the clips that I'm about to show you because Connor seemed to be pretty yak out this entire weekend. Moving right along, we have this super awkward clip of him pulling on Britton Hart's hair right in front of his fiance, D. Devlin. Oh my god, the level of cringe in this clip is so damn high. First, you can see that Hart herself was not happy with him yanking on her hair out of nowhere. I feel like you can kind of see her looking back annoyed at whoever just grabbed her, but then she notices it's her boss, so she plays it cool for a little bit, and then she maneuvers herself to the side so that he can't do it again. And then, of course, D motions to Connor to cut that shit out, and then literally steps in between them because she's clearly pissed at him for acting like a little bit of a weirdo right in front of her. I also love his awkward little laugh to try and play off the situation only to then slap D on the ass and then he pulls her hair too and then we have this McGregor interview with JN Media and just look at how his mouth is moving around right here just before he starts to call out Floyd Mayweather for a bare knuckle boxing match Floyd you little yeah, right, you're doing bad co uh, conversations, trying to get a boxing match at 155. Fight me my way, on the A-side. You owe your f***ing self. Bare knuckle, McGregor Mayweather, 170 pounds. Let's go, baby. Take off the gloves and fight. Obviously, all of this is following the now legendary Stan Jabase livestream where he was very clearly high on coke, and in all seriousness, this is not a great look for the guy. Like, every time we've seen him in the last couple of months, he's clearly under the influence of the good old Peruvian flake. Like, we have Connor from this past weekend, and then he had the live stream from last week, then there was his bizarre behavior at the Anthony Joshua Daniel Dubois boxing event, and then the Roadhouse interview where he was absolutely tweaking was incredibly strange. Okay, now listen to McGregor's response on what he he had to say about Ilya Toporia. Yeah, this is in his home country. This is my home country, baby. My Bay of Spain, where's he at? This ain't his home country. He knows where his home country is, and it's not España. So, uh, good luck, Max Holloway. What in the Israel Adesanya is this? At least in Adesanya's case, he lived in China for several years before he started calling himself Chinese, but in McGregor's case, the guy spends like maybe a couple of weeks a year maybe in Spain. Also, for a guy who mocked Rafael Dos Anjos for moving to the United States and for giving his sons American names, it seems a little bit weird for him to be proudly claiming Spain as his home country. And have you answer to the Brazilian people why? We have to book you a hotel in your own home country. Why? Your kids' names are Bob. Your kids' names are Bob and Donald. Why are you raising American children? Why don't you trust in your own people? Also, I'm not going to speak for any Irish people here, but I would imagine that his actual countrymen from his actual home country of Ireland probably aren't too pleased with this guy all of a sudden claiming Spain. And speaking of Ilio Toporia, this was not the only time that Connor made it a point to call him a fake Spaniard this weekend because he had this to say about him earlier that day during this press conference event. I would say I would bet on Ilio Toporia, but he is not Spanish. He is Georgian. Let's be real. I am a Spanish, if not more Spanish than Ilya Taburia, who is a Georgian man 
undercover. Okay, it's like I kind of get where he's coming from, seeing as Ilya wasn't born in Spain or whatever. But Toporia has lived in Spain for 12 years. He was granted Spanish citizenship in March of this year, and the guy does all of his training camps in Spain. So personally, I feel like he has every right to claim it as his home country if he wants. The main thing here is that there is absolutely no way that Connor can reasonably say that he is more Spanish than a guy that's lived there for over a decade. It's just weird to me seeing as he's always been about Irish pride and how he brags about never changing his training camps from his original team, yet here he is trying to paint himself as more Spanish than Toptoro. How do you think you would beat Ili Ilya Abturo? Toptoro? Or grab his little, grab him with a scruff of the chest and slap that little nose off him, yeah? And then in this same interview, McGregor is once again asked about a Floyd Mayweather rematch, and this is what he had to say. It's a baby. It's possible. Yeah. You know, there is conversations ongoing. I fought Floyd at 153 pounds, which is a low weight for me. So he brought me all the way down. And it was over 12 rounds, 12 rounds of boxing. I'd never fought 12 rounds. So, you know, now... The discussion is the next fight for a rematch is at my weight, higher, heavyweight, 170 pounds, and, obviously, and maybe less rounds. So I would fancy it. I had him bent over. You see me, I had him bent over. So what more do you want me to do? You want me to finish the job? <laughs> to be honest, I don't have too much to say about this besides Connor doing a little bit of coping about how much he weighed going into the fight. Like he's making it seem like he was compromised in the first fight because he had to weigh in at 153 pounds, but the fight right before this was him kicking Eddie Alvarez's ass at 155, and then his very next fight was Habib also at 155. Like at least at the time when Connor and Floyd fought for the first time, I really wouldn't say the weight was a significant factor in how the fight played. Out. Okay, now let's check out how McGregor went rogue following the main event. Do a bonus for for this fight. We're gonna do a bonus, No, 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 no. Listen, we're gonna do bonuses, yes, for both these gentlemen, as well as a multitude of other people that fought on this card. But what we're gonna do for these two gentlemen, as well as a bonus, is double the purse. They're getting double pay. That's it, Trey. Well done, gentlemen. You're getting double pay and bonus. I mean, hey, you guys know me, I'm all about fighters getting paid more, so I don't have any issues with this in the slightest. And honestly, I think it's a really good business move to show that Connor is willing to pay fighters more on top of their regular purses if they put on a good show. But what I love most from this clip is that he clearly didn't consult David Feldman about doubling the fighters' pay and made the executive decision himself right then and there. Not only that, the unmistakable look of horror on Feldman's face as he realizes he needs to honor McGregor's promise of doubling their purse on top of the bonuses that he just guaranteed as gold to me. Like, this guy can't even hide the look of anxiety of wondering how he's going to fork out this unexpected amount of money. But to be fair, I do get the feeling that Connor might actually pay the second purses to the main event fighters himself, but this is just a suspicion. I obviously have no idea if this will be the case or not. And if you want me to be real, I kinda hope that I'm wrong here because him going rogue and promising double purses only to force David Feldman to pay for it himself would be utterly hilarious. Now, here we have Connor and none other than Dan Hooker sharing a laugh together in the ring, and if you've been paying attention lately, then you might know that Dan has been gunning for a UFC fight with McGregor ever since his Michael Chandler fight fell through. Then after the event ended, a reporter was able to catch up with McGregor as he was leaving the venue, where he seems to confirm the date, location, and opponent of his return to the UFC. Connor, do we have a date for the comeback yet? February 4th, Saudi Arabia. Who, who's the opponent? So he claims that he's making his comeback on February 1st in Saudi Arabia, and of course it'll be against Hooker. But honestly, man, I will believe it when I see it, because at this point, as much as I want to see McGregor finish his final two fights on his UFC contract, I just can't have any confidence in him actually making it into the octagon, let alone in proper fighting shape. I will say that I think the fact that Connor was so readily able to provide a date and location for his supposed comeback indicates that he's already been in talks with Dana and Hunter Campbell about this, but at the end of the day, they can make all of the plans in the world and have as many fighters as they want lined up for him, but none of that matters if he isn't able to get himself into the ring. Alright, and that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Clearly, this was a long and eventful weekend for the guy, and I really do get the feeling that he used his favorite PED of all, cocaine, in order to fuel him throughout all of the media obligations. Like, I sincerely think that in all of these clips that we've watched, Connor's under the influence of the Colombian marching powder 
in every single one of them. But at the same time, I would be lying if I said that McGregor was not a ton of fun to watch throughout this weekend's BKFC event. Like, he really made every single appearance in front of the camera memorable and entertaining. And no joke, when he opened up the event where he was almost certainly high, he did a pretty damn good job at getting the fans in the venue as well as viewers at home hyped up for the festivities. Sober or not, McGregor is a pretty natural promoter, and I think that the BKFC is in a much better place with him as a co-owner, even in moments where he goes off script and damn near gives Feldman a heart attack in the middle of the ring. Anyways, that's the video for today. Definitely let me know what you think about Conor shenanigans from this past weekend. Do you believe him about the details of his UFC comeback, or do you think we're never going to see him step back into the octagon ever again? As always, if you like the video, then like the video, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. I appreciate you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.